this episode, we're going to Fort Gibson, Oklahoma. And besides the Second Seminole War that I've researched, I've also researched many things going on at the same time, not necessarily in Florida. And part of the removal of the Seminoles and the Creeks, uh, of course, connects to Oklahoma. You have the same Army officers, uh, same Native Americans uh, at both places in the southeast and in, uh, around Fort Gibson, Oklahoma. So it makes sense to study both places. I, I've studied at the University of Oklahoma and Norman, Oklahoma, uh, been to Oklahoma several times, researched in the Oklahoma History Center in Oklahoma City, uh, but enough of me. I was uh, looking up letters to transcribe for the Seminole War Group, and I found one that I can't pass up that I need to share with you. Uh, Matthew or Arbuckle, Colonel Matthew Arbuckle, he was involved in the first Seminole War. He was commanding at Fort Scott in southwest Georgia, uh, what is today the confluence of the Flint and Chattahoochee Rivers. And he took his army uh, and had, uh, you know, I guess, as Major David Twiggs at the time, go and attack the village of Neamathala at Fowltown. And of course, they got fired on and came back, uh, killed about five of the Seminoles at F Fowltown. Two days later, uh, Colonel Arbuckle returned to Fowltown with 300 soldiers and uh, totally razed it and destroyed it. And so it's pretty much, he's pretty much one of the people who started. Uh, the first Seminole War that eventually led to Andrew Jackson coming down into Florida and rampaging and uh, hanging two British citizens and uh, taking over Pensacola, establishing Fort Gadsden. So, you know, Arbuckle has a lot of influence, but after the first Seminole War uh, was over, he was at Fort Scott for a while. His uh, surgeon at the post was Thomas Lawson, who would later become the Surgeon General. And Arbuckle and Lawson didn't get, get along. In fact, got in a fist fight at Fort Scott. Arbuckle put the surgeon in the stockade, knocked him out cold. Uh, and so that caused problem eventually. Thomas Lawson sued uh, Arbuckle or demanded a court martial. And there was one, but the higher ups in the army eventually decided this was ridiculous. Uh, we shouldn't have the high ranking officers quarreling and fist fighting like this. So all the charges were dropped. Anyway, uh, Matthew Arbuckle in the 1820s, he uh, commanded the regiment, 7th Infantry Regiment, and went to Arkansas Territory, Indian Territory, what we now call the state of Oklahoma. Uh, he was at Fort Smith, Arkansas. I'm not sure if he established Fort Smith, but anyway, he went to uh, Fort Gibson. Fort Gibson was established in 1824 and was an active military post off and on uh, during the Civil War. In the uh, Spanish-American War, the Buffalo soldiers were there. So there's quite a bit of history, and that's kind of the view behind me is the old Fort Gibson. Uh, those buildings were actually reconstructed by the WPA, or Civilian Conservation Corps, in the, I don't know, about 1940 or so. And just a few years ago, they actually renovated it, reconstructed it, because uh, after about 70, 70, 75 years, it gets a little termite eaten and needs some work. So that's... Uh, they're restored now, and you can see it if you get the opportunity. And further up the hill behind me, you don't see them there, but they have more of the later periods. You see the stables behind my shoulder. And further up is the hospital dating from the 1890s. And you have some very impressive stone barracks where the soldiers were in the officers' houses. Uh, several famous people you might recognize were there. Um, Jefferson Davis, as a young lieutenant, was stationed there. 
married the daughter of Zachary Taylor, uh, his commanding officer at the time, and unfortunately she died. Uh, Jefferson Davis was actually court-martialed at that point. I, think, I believe the charges were dropped. I can't remember what it was. I think there's probably a plaque or interpretive sign that you can see about that at Fort Gibson as well. Anyway, Matthew Arbuckle, he had about 30 years of service in Indian territory, and he was responsible for keeping peace on the frontier, and much of the United States policy was carried out by Colonel Arbuckle. So he was great influence of the Indian policy there, and he was commanding the 7th Infantry Regiment until his death in 1851. His, uh, might have been at Fort Smith, Arkansas. I can't remember which. You can look it up anyway. Um, so this is a letter from 1836 um, that Arbuckle said, said some interesting things. I'll only quote it. Um, so, you know, the, he's saying there's only a difference from the operation those expressed in the bridge at the post below the should be larger than recommend, that met recommended. Much has been said of the unhealthiness of this position. I am not of the opinion that is entirely healthy, but I do not believe that any point on the Arkansas River between this and the Arkansas Territory will prove more healthy in as much as we're occupied by a large force. It is true that there have been many deaths at this post. In fact, Fort Gibson was notoriously uh, known for the deaths, and it, much was written about that in the Army Navy Chronicle. Uh, it's been tr true that there have been many deaths at this post, yet if the government will institute an inquiry and, and the cause of these deaths it is believed that it will be found that more than one half of the number have been lost from causes not chargeable to the climate of Fort Gibson. It said only one half are caused by the climate. So it makes you wonder after many deaths what these others are caused by. Actually, you can read the post returns and the adjutant papers and know full well. I can assure the government that as far as my convenience or interest is concerned. I would be grateful if the troops at this station were this day removed to a position lower down the Arkansas River. Um, so anyway, but what I'm interested in reading, that was an attachment to the back of this letter. This letter was written uh, 21st February, 1837. Uh, I'm sorry, I said Colonel Arbuckle, but now he's a general. General Matthew Ar Arbuckle, written to the Army Adjutant General of the Army, which is Roger Jones in Washington, D.C., reports of the particulars of an affray between the Cherokee Indians and the Battalion of Arkansas Volunteers. Fort Gibson was in Cherokee Nation territory, but it's where all the nations being removed from the southeast would come to. They'd travel up the Mississippi, up the Arkansas River or Canadian River, whatever it was, and they'd arrive at Fort Gibson and disperse from there. So let's get a screen share going. Take me a minute. All right, here we go. Okay, this letter, Matthew Arbuckle. Headquarters, Army of the Western Frontier, Fort Gibson, February 21st, 1836. Sir, for the information of the War Department, I deem it my duty to give you the particulars of an occurrence between the Cherokee Indians and the Battalion of Arkansas Volunteers on duty at this post. They are drawn up from the best information on the subject on the fifth instance, about three miles from this post, on the Bayou Menard, Cherokee Nation, 
there was a frolic given it a house of ill fame. There assembled the there two or three of the Arkansas volunteers, some Cherokee Indians and colored people becoming excited by spiritous liquors and perhaps other causes towards the close of the evening they felt to fighting the Cherokees and the Negroes on the one side and the volunteers on the other. But from the superior numbers of the former, the latter were compelled to leave the evening entertainment with a severe drubbing as a reward for their attendance. The day following the aggrieved party, together with a number of their friends, not exceeding 20, returned to the nation and not being able to find their immediate offenders, fell upon a, a lonely, uh, I'm sorry, fell not able to find their immediate offenders, fell upon and severely beat a young Indian lad and several other Cherokees. Besides using the menacing threats towards them as the people were when passing their lodges, these circumstances created some excitement in the Cherokee nation near to this place, who collected to the number of 20 or 25 on the Bayou Menard, headed by a drunkard and disorderly Cherokee. They caused to be circulated that they were a going to attack the volunteers in their camp. Sorry, let's go to the next page here. Through a more authentic channel, I have since been informed that the real intentions of the Indians was to lay there until some of the volunteers might repeat their visit. And in that case, to pay them the with interest of the unwarranted violence they had committed on their people. I have caused the offenders to be arrested and tried for their force and to prevent the reoccurrence of a similar offense. I have withdrawn the volunteers from this, uh, from the, I have withdrawn the volunteers from their camping ground and placed them on the reserve a short distance from the fort. The Indians, the Indian women who were the main cause of the affray have also been punished by the Cherokees who turned out to meet the volunteers. As soon as they, accomplished the latter object, they peacefully returned to their homes. I have much honor to remain with much respect, your obedient servant, Matthew R. Brockle, uh, Brevet Brigadier General Commanding to Brigadier General Roger Jones, Adjutant General U.S. Army Washington City, D.C. Okay, so <laughs> that's, quite, that's quite a letter. So you can see why I want to uh, read it to you. So it, basically what it was is that uh, the Arkansas volunteers and the Cherokees were at a local brothel and got into a fight after much drinking and carousing. And so the I guess the next day, some of the Ar Arkansas volunteers got together and went to the Cherokee village nearby. Uh, beat up a young man and uh, offended many of them. And so the Indians retaliated and came up and lay in wait to attack the volunteers when they would return to the brothel, at the same time punishing the uh, prostitutes were at the brothel for their role in somehow causing the affair. Uh, Colonel Arbuckle removed the Arkansas volunteers from wherever their encampment was much closer to the fort. <laughs> so 
that's a typical life at Fort Gibson in Indian Territory. And it's a crazy story. I hope you enjoyed it.